Hey, it's Selena, and there's one thing that we all share in common that I'm a little bit obsessed with talking about, and that is our identities. Now, it's not always an easy journey, and I've come to learn to be comfortable talking about the uncomfortable. So here's a series of very honest and personal interviews with celebrities, activists, friends, even my neighbours, where we share all of our personal stories of how we've come to embrace our unique identities. Yes, I'm good, thank you, my love. Not yeah. too bad. It's a, it's a kind of thing where I just have like a routine, and then I'm a I'm a typical Virgo. If I don't get it done, I'm like, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Yeah, you know, it's one of them, love. So, how's um my lockdown been for you? How's yeah, um, but you know what, hon? It's um it's kind of fifty fifty for me. You know, uh, I've had some, like the first lockdown, fuck me, I, I, I was in a real bad way. Like, you know, I, I was ill as well. I've had COVID twice. Um, oh, have you? Yeah, yeah, darling. It was really oh, wow. awful. So, uh, twice. Twice. I, even there. <laughs> I don't you know what the first time I was last year, I was doing, a, I was preparing myself for a fitness competition on stage because um, yeah. I thought, Do you know what, I'm going to, I just want to be on stage to, you know, flex my body out, get my little winky out, or well, not so much so. And, uh, you know, just, and I carried on working out when everyone was kind of in lockdown. So I went to, yeah. the and then I don't know, like a few days later after lockdown, I, I started to get really ill and I was like, oh, fuck me. And I think that I picked it up from some country in the gym. Um, and then I was ill here for like a, a week and I had, uh, I had to have antibiotics and, and the doctor said that he was convinced I had it. Uh, so I had two weeks of antibiotics for a day off in between, then I was fine. And then I had it when I was with some bird last year in August, September. And I'm right. like, that's impossible. Oh, fucking great, this, isn't it? <laughs> so, so that's what happened. Um, so other than that, I mean, this kind of, the, the other lockdown, it's not been too bad. I've been, my mind's coped with it because I live alone and my daughter only stays occasionally. You know, um, I live alone a lot, you know, but I, I don't know, I kind of, the trouble is, and this is so true, Selena, right? Whenever you live alone for so long, you kind of get used to your own company. Yeah. You know, um, and you, you're not used to people being around the house or, you know, you, you think, oh, fuck, who's that? You know, so it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a catch-22, you know? Anyway, what about you? How's things with the lockdown with you? Have, have you been all right? I mean, it was bittersweet and, you know, people can say what they say about being selfish and whatever. I personally did find it hard not to go to the gym. For me, the gym was so important for my mental yeah. health and, you know, focusing on my well-being before. I was doing so, so well and that just went through the window <laughs> during the lockdown. But at the same time, I mean, it did allow us to take a step back and take a breather yeah. down it. And I think it wouldn't have happened if we weren't forced to. Um, but I think it's important to, you know, reflect on what you're doing and what's important, um, in your life. And I think it was needed in a weird way, although it's a horrible situation. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel your pain, honestly, even like some days I do, I mean, I'm only human. I mean, I do, I'm happy most of the time, but I am fucking, sometimes I get down and like, you know, I think yeah. to myself, fuck, because I, I don't know about you. And this is what I do. I, I'm a bit of a nightmare because I look at other people's things yeah. on Instagram and I think, Fuck, why can't I have a bit yeah. of that? You know, it kind of makes me a little bit, I don't know, like, oh, man, I'm jealous or, you know, but, but I'm fucking envious, jealous. that's the word, envious of saying, oh, you know, but I'm not like, oh, you can't say I fucking want that job. You know, I'm like, oh, man, I want, I want that fucking job. But like, um, <laughs> I swear a lot, I'm terrible. Um, but it's one of them. I just sometimes I, I have to come away from social media and go, I can't be yeah. seeing this because if I'm away from social media, I don't see any of it, and then I can concentrate on my singing. You look great as well, by the way. Like, oh, without averted or anything, because I'm not. I always <laughs> give compliments where they're juicing. Like, you look great. So, thank you. Know, you. you know. Thank you. Um, you look great. Jamie's paying off. Oh, darling, you flirt. <laughs> Do you know what's crazy? I, I checked your. Um, I'm not gonna lie. What's your audition for the X Factor? <laughs> yeah, I, a million views, darling. A million views. I know. 
I was back in 2014. Do you know how old I was? Oh, my God. I can't even. What? Don't tell me you were like two. No, I was like 14 years old. But still, wow. I was 14 when you auditioned. So it's Fuck. crazy that I'm speaking to you right, right now. Like, Oh, my God. Wow. No. Does that so make you old? <laughs> yeah, it fucking does. Thanks for that. I'm going to come off and go, shit, I'm older. <laughs> When was the last time you watched your audition? Oh, do you know this is the thing? I hate watching myself back. Um, yeah, I just don't know. I just, I, I just, I do the performance. I do it, and I do my best, and then that's it. I don't like watching myself back because sometimes I'm, I'm very kind of sensitive. Uh, yeah. I think most performers are. You know, they are sensitive. We are sensitive people. Yeah. Um, and I don't like going, oh, fuck, oh, that was horrible. I don't like it because I'm my own critic and I'm thinking that was shit. And I am. I'm a typical Virgo. I just like, nah, yeah. I don't didn't like it. So, nah, I can't. I just, I do my shit and that's it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But like, what, what made you want to audition in the first? Did they reach you or did you sign up to audition? No. So... There's a bit of a story behind this, and I won't bore you to there because I don't. I try not to. Um, okay, so what happened was I've previously auditioned for X Factor for about seven years, not on the trot, like you know what I mean, but but like like seven years throughout the whole thing. Right. And then I was sitting in my call center one day, and I I was so bored. I just said to myself, "Do you know what? I even get goosebumps thinking about it now. I mean, I'm right." And I, I just I flexed it. <laughs> Go on. Um, <laughs> I'm not doing it. So um, you worked at a call centre before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You wow. I've done pantos and cabaret before, like Elvis Presley impersonator and everything. I saw um, a Tina Turner video, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. I know people <laughs> piss themselves at it because I, I go, where'd you get the outfit? And I go, <laughs> I ordered it, you know, and uh, that was that. But I do crazy videos. Um, I was going to put one on my bum cheeks on there, but anyway. Um, <laughs> Should have uh, done that for the X Factor. I'll tell you what, I think I would have probably got further. Um, <laughs> what happened was, so yeah, I just said uh, I want to change my life for me and my daughter. And um, then I, 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 I missed you in London auditions and I thought, fuck. So I applied, and they said, right, you can either go to Birmingham or Liverpool. And I thought, well, fucking, I ain't going to Liverpool too far. Where so, are you based? Um, Where are you from? I mean, well, I was at the time I was in Essex and Colchester. Oh, okay, um, yeah. And I love it. Uh, but now I'm in Buckinghamshire in Aylesbury. I don't know if you know it, Selena, but I love it. Shut Do you know up. Where? Do you know where I am? Where, where are, are you? you? Fuck off. No, no way. Way. Yeah. I'm going to like a stone's throw away. <laughs> Elsie, Elsie, yes, Stoke Mandeville. Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, by the hospital. Yes, I'm five minutes from there. Oh wow. my god! What small, small world. world. Fuck! What a small world. No oh one that I know knows what where Highwicken is. That's why I'm, I'm so surprised. I know, I know the Swan because I performed there. Do you know the uh, theatre? I worked there. Oh, I did work experience there when I was younger. Oh my god! This yeah. is so crazy. And I, I used to go to the gym there as well when on tour, any time fitness there, so, <laughs> yeah. as I would do. So, oh my God, that's so nuts. Um, so you I'm went all the way to... from Ellsbury, or were you in Essex at the time? Essex, yeah. Oh, right, so, right, right. I went from there to, to Birmingham, um, and I never thought in a million, and I, so I even said to myself today, never thought in a million years I would ever get on the show, right? Ten years, right, I've been watching it continuously, religiously, loved it, and I thought I'd never get on there, but you know what, I love it. So. I auditioned and I waited in the in the cold in Birmingham City Football Stadium, um, and it was so cold. Honestly, I was yeah. Were the queues long? It was quite about four hours I waited. It was about four thousand people there at the time, and I thought, and I was like, I might go home. But then I thought that something inside of me went, no, stay. This is your chance. Yeah, this is it. You just don't know. So anyway, I went to the back in these booths and the, I, the geezer, he, I didn't know who he was at the time, but he is the top fucking talent agent of right. Cycle TV and um, Tames TV. Yeah, because so, yeah, obviously what we see on TV is different to what yeah. you would have gone through. So you do an audition before the actual audition, right? Absolutely. Yes, right. three of them. So I won't, listen, I won't, like, yeah, I won't pulled up. I wasn't scouted. 
I wasn't like, oh, we've seen your videos on YouTube. Yeah. I went through the back door, not the front. Some of the contestants went through the front. I won't say who. Yeah. But me, I was one of the very few on that year. Um, I think I think there was only two of us, me and someone, another contestant, that got through the back door, not the front door. And I, I thought to myself, it's a million and one shot. It's like winning the lottery. And anyway, I sung this song. I sung something, um, uh, oh, fuck. Somebody to love, George Michael and, uh, and George Michael and uh, Queen. Yeah, yeah. Was so, that by your your choice, or did they tell was, you? No, yeah. it was my choice. And I done, I done literally a verse and a chorus. They said, right, okay, what's your name? Where you from? All this palaver, and then I just went, um, somebody love <laughs> this fucking song out like with no business. And the keys are going. I'm going to put you through. And I went, what? He said, "Yeah, come back tomorrow, though. You got to, you're going to be with with these other producers." And I went, "Oh my god!" So I had to go all the way back to Colchester, but I was fucking buzzing, like saying, yeah. honestly. And I, for the for the past seven years, I never got past the second stage. Can I just say, never got past the second stage. So so yeah, I went back the next day. Cut a long story short, um, I I literally got through that audition, dropped to my knees, had a tear in my eye. Then I had to go back the next day. And then I got through that audition and they said to me, right, okay, we'll let you know in four to six weeks' time. And that was it. Right. So I went home and I went, I went back to my call centre thinking, fuck, I've done so good. It would be nice to get a fucking, uh, be in front of the judges, yeah. which were Simon Cowell, Mel B, Cheryl and Louis. Mm -hmm. um, and they were honestly incredible people. Mm. I loved every seat. There was not one judge I hated. They were all so nice to me. They were Simon obviously was my mentor, and yeah. I, I fucking love him. Crazy. He, Are you still in touch with him? No, honey. Follows me on Twitter, but you know what? A lot of, and this is horrible to say because I, I will always stick up for the show that fed me. All right, yeah. and some I other that written down. You said, um, you said something like "never bite the hand that feeds you," right? One hundred percent, and I still mean that to this day. I won't. I'm only real. I'm genuine. I'm honest. And people have every right to their opinions, Liam, right? Yeah. And they do. They can say whatever. But for me, and and this is my honest truth, I will never, ever, in my million years, I'm well, however long I'm on this fucking earth, mm -hmm. I will never, ever slate X Factor or Simon Cowell because I'm telling you now, that man gave me things that I've never thought possible. Mm -hmm. Gave me a house. Gave me two cars. He, he, I'm still working to this day, pre-COVID, obviously. Um, pre do, they, do they pay you for being on the X Factor? No, they don't pay you. I mean, they put a bit of money towards um, your bills if you've got right. any bills. And at the time, I never had a house or anything. I just had like, uh, you know, child maintenance, phone bill, and that was it. So um, I was all right. And then you make the money when you come out of the show, and yeah. you make, I mean, I can't tell you how much. Was that from like Big Brother and like things like that? I, I went as a big brother with my ex fiance uh, yeah. and got to the final. Um, they paid good money for that. I had a yeah. great experience. It was an amazing experience, big brother. And I'm one of the only 300 odd people that ever went on it. So I'm proud of that as well. Yeah. Out of all the years it was on. So you feel like that's good practice for lockdown, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you what, I was fucking used to it because I had no fact. I mean, you didn't have no magazine. The only thing is, you didn't have no phone, magazine, TV, Netflix, um, or or any porn to look at, really. So, yeah. um, my, mind you, I did have Gemma Jameson in the hot tub with me. Yeah. So. <laughs> Isn't it weird though that you, you're around like because you seem like a like a like a down to earth lad, but isn't it weird that you were around people that were like famous or like yeah, you know yeah. what i mean totes totes honey it was like okay i'm going to celeb big brother um and i never thought I, I i mean i want you to go in i really did i had this thing in my head i was like i've got to go in i want to go in big brother um looking at it in hindsight i'd have no regrets but i made two friends out of that show i'm um, natasha hamilton from atomic kitten um who i work with in panto and bobby davro who phoned me the other week so Aww. for me it's it's nice. I made two friends out of it. The rest I don't really talk to really. Jenna Jameson, I I message on on Twitter occasionally, mm. but other than that, that's it, hun. So it was a good experience being with such amazing and crazy fucking people. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so um, yeah, great experience, hun. Honestly, it was just yeah. I mean, 
I could write a book on it one day, and one day I will. One day. You should, yeah. I'm going to watch this. Is there a having a blue tick next to your name? I had to fucking work for that. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I've been wanting to get a blue tick for ages, and everyone said, why aren't you verified? And X Factor never verified me, but they verify Twitter. So I'm on Twitter, and I'm verified on Twitter because that's what they do. Yeah. So um, I got with this PR company, and they said, okay, Stevie, all right, we'll leave it with us. And I thought nothing of it. Within a fucking couple of days, I had a blue tick. I was like, oh, my God, I got blue tick. I got blue tick. I was like, fucking, this is brilliant. Oh, my God, this is so cool. And everyone goes, yeah. Stevie Ritchie, blue tick, verified. <laughs> so, and it makes a lot of difference, I have to say. It really does. When you get verified with blue tick, without boasting up my own ass, honestly, um, you get a whole level of respect, don't you? Like, do. So, yeah, hun, it's, it's nice. And you know what? One day you're going to get yours, Liam, so don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. For doing something good, I hope. <laughs> you will. You'll get a nice dream job and you'll be like, Fucking brilliant, you know. Yeah, you will. I, hope so. I, I don't know why, but uh, call me psychic, right? Because I am quite spiritual. I I don't know why. Looking at you right now, and I'll be honest with you, I can see you doing some sort of um, journalist news presenting, like like. Really? Honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got. I will be honest with you. That's what I see. I can see you doing. It's sort of. I can just see you sort of now. I present uh, sort of like doing being like a journalist for the news. Like I, oh. I see football. Or is that, that's what I, yeah, that's what I see you doing. That's just. I me. appreciate that, you know. I don't know. I, I see it now. I think you, you kind of like. Can you see me on the ground, not a show. <laughs> now we go, go over to Selena, who's now with um, <laughs> such and such. That's what I see. That's what I see. Anyway, I oh. may be look, I may be wrong, but that's what I see. I, I'll take it. I'll hang on to that. Honestly. Honestly, honestly, just Mark, when you when you do get it right, just give me a message. Bloody better. <laughs> <laughs> but what what are you what are you doing now? Or oh, like do you still do you still sing? Yeah, hun. I mean because of COVID, I, I mean I'm just doing a little bit of um part time on the side. Yeah. Just to kind of you know, I don't care what anyone says, I'm a humble person anyway. So I'm I'm humble enough to go, do you know what? Bills got to be paid, mortgage mortgage got to be paid, I've got a child to think of. So I just do a little, just to pay it, just a little bit, you know. Um, but now slowly the gigs are coming back in. Yeah. The holiday parks, Pont Inns, um, you know, Haven, Park Dean, they're all coming back in. They want a piece of Stevie Ritchie, which is great. So, you know, I'm preparing do you, myself. Do you get to stay there for free or do you just sing there? Sometimes, not all the time. <laughs> I have to pay the bloody 20 quid or so. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of them. But, yeah. I, you know, I only do like an hour. I, I, you know, I have a nice selection of songs. I'm just sort of getting, preparing myself for it, hun. So, you know, that's what I've been doing, really. Practicing my songs, giving myself some singing warm-ups in that daily, if I can. What warm-ups do you do? Can you show me I'm one? Sort of... <laughs> You've got me on the spot now. Um, <laughs> so I sort of do like a, um, I don't know, sort of like a scale, kind of, yeah. You know, so an E-A-O, E-A-O, and it, you know, go up and down, and it kind of just gets your because it, it's muscle memory, and if you don't use it, you lose it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, you know, I kind of make sure my voice is just still there. Yeah, and that's what yeah. I, do, you know. I need to because you know, it's my living. This is my this here is my living. This face, well, I can't do much about that, but you know, I this is my living, so that's what I do, Selena Hunt. So, yeah. Did you did you get um like coaching on the X Factor? Did they? I love these questions. You know what? Yes, we did. Do you know what? It's it's the bits that we don't get to see, and I feel like had they shown those bits, it would have made it way more interesting, like with the show. Because yeah. I think that's why people have like a misconception of it now that it's like a bit too fake for some people, right? Yeah, yeah. Like that no. it's a bit too like celebrity glam and not like about finding true talent. But like obviously everyone's experiences are gonna be different. But like it I really wanna know like what what was it like behind the scenes? Yeah, totes like um well, so yeah, I mean behind the scenes there's so much. Like honestly, um 
it's so like the production staff and crew they work so hard like yeah. they really do like to, to, to get the show going um so basically i go through the schedule like throughout the week what you do so basically on the monday you get up at probably six seven o'clock in the morning okay you right. then get, get driven to the studios uh what uh, what song you're gonna sing so they're gonna say the, for instance they say to me stevie your song this week is gonna be living a vida loca and you're like oh wow wow i love that song but yeah so uh we <laughs> we go to the studio we get what song we're gonna do and then like the camera reaction and this that and the other you what happens if song. you're like i don't want to sing that song but like do I you can't. know what i'm glad you mentioned that because there was one week Right, I I fucking kicked off, and <laughs> I I didn't mean to, but everyone kept winding me up saying, "Oh, Stevie, this week you're going to sing Ghostbusters," and I thought I fucking hate singing Ghostbusters, and I kicked off a song. Yeah, I really did. So what I'd done, I I walked in and I said, "I'm not doing fucking Ghostbusters, <laughs> not doing Ghostbusters, not doing it," and they looked at me and went, well, "You know, I think this would be good for you, Steve." I went, "No, look," I said, "Please give me my moment of." what i can do voice wise yeah. musical so i said look let me sing music of the night from phantom of the opera yeah. please i beg you and then i'll do whatever you That's want me to do. and i love it it's a great song and for me i've seen it years right i've done it at my best friend's wedding one of them right yeah. so um have you ever I'm, watched it live i have once brilliant you? yeah it's great I, still haven't. I need to go watch it it's so incredible it's like ah, oh, the, the the singing is phenomenal right yeah. oh my god so i just went along and uh, i had to wait and then simon gave me his thumbs up and then i sang music of the night and that was the week that kind of it kind of changed for me because a lot of people thought oh fuck me as a joke act but when i done that song so and i did you not i think i was third in the poll of winning uh people were like fuck he can sing he can he can, yeah. entertain, he can sing he's humble he's got a personality and people started to buy into me, and I'm not even being a big head because I, I read in the paper I was. No, you have to paper. own it. You have to own it. You're right. Own it with pride. And yeah. I was people's champ, right? And I was like, oh my god, I'm like people's favourite. Oh my god, that's fucking. But then you know, it went back. I uh, done uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, Freddie Mercury, and do you know what? People, I lasted seven weeks out of ten. Right? I thought I was going to be gone. I was favourite. So, sorry, I was favourite to go every week. Right, every week, par bar in one week, which, which was Phantom of the Opera, I think. I don't know. But anyway, I lasted seven weeks. So, wow, you know. And I got on the X Factor tour. That is like, uh -huh. aha. Yeah. I cannot tell you. <sighs> Honestly, pinch moment, pinch moment. Here's one of them. I mean, it, your life would have obviously been different had you not gone on there. Well, and it's all down to you, like, believing in yourself, isn't it? Like, you yeah. took that chance. You went... Absolutely. Do you know what? I say this to everybody, right? Um, even though you want to quit, just keep going. Shane yeah. Ritchie gave me that advice once. He said, look, just keep going. Believe in yourself. Keep going. Uh, he's one of my idols. I, I've worked with Shane. I love him. Um, and it's like, oh, it, you've got to keep going and banging that door down because you know what? Eventually it will break and you walk through it and then you fucking, you made it. So for yeah. me, it was all about, okay, I got. I I want this so bad, and this is another saying I use as well. When you haven't got nothing to lose, you'll give everything you've got, yeah. and you do. And that's what I've done on the show each and every week. I didn't give a shit about the negative press and all the shit that I come with it. I didn't even look at it. I was like, oh, I don't give a shit. I was there enjoying the moment, having my time, and do you know what? Surviving and getting through each week and enjoying it, and yeah. that's what that's what kept me kind of going you know and my daughter yeah. just thinking right okay i'm doing this for me and my daughter and i'm going to change my life and you know what i fucking i did for me i did and for her it's brilliant how old's your daughter she is 13 oh, um dude. yeah she's amazing she is like honestly she's got more intelligent than me she's <laughs> so cool she's a dancer she's great um so I also creative yeah creative for she just loves dancing she wants to be a holiday camp entertainer when she's older and probably following my footsteps i don't know but um she's like honestly it's Lynn. she's she's the only i think she's the one thing that still kept me on this earth does that make sense yeah. like um you know she's kept me grounded 
She's kept me in, uh, sane and, and yeah, I, but honestly, I owe my life to her because I don't think I'll be here if it weren't for her. I was going to say, like, what is it like being a dad? Like, do you remember the, the first time when she was born? Yeah, I, um, I weren't there um, for reasons, but um, I, I held her in the first time in my arms and I was... That was it. I was hooked. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I, I've got, I've always wanted a daughter, you see. And I thought, like, wow, I've got, you know, yeah. oh, it was just, yeah. And now she's like, fuck it, 13, 14 this year. And it's like, she just wants to see her friends and go out. And, yeah. you know, she don't want to see dad much anymore because she's oh. like, you know, she just wants me for fucking money or so. But, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, she's. Has oh, she seen your audition at the X Factor? Loads of times, loads yeah. of times. She was she was in one of them as well. Oh. The when she was a little kid, um, I think it was the arena rounds, and I yeah. don't stop me now. She come running on stage Aww. and give me a hug. That was a magical moment for me. That was uh, just a moment I'll never forget. Honestly. Yeah, that must have been so sur- like surreal. It was because it just it reminds you like why you're doing it. One hundred percent, maybe yeah, just. It was emotional fucking, I'll tell you on the show, I love it, but it made me a fucking emotional wreck. <laughs> I, I remember I walked onto the stage and got into the studio on the, uh, like the first Saturday or the Friday and I cried. I just, I, I think for some reason, I just, I fucking cried and then all of a sudden the cameras were like, right on me. <laughs> uh, why are you crying, Stevie? I've been watching the show for 10 years <laughs> and I never thought I would never get on it. I never, and it was just like, Fuck, I just literally got so emotional because yeah. you never think in a million years watching it on telly like for 10 years and you've been auditioning seven years of that, you never think, oh, I'll never get on there. And then that moment hits you when you stand on pretty much that stage, that fucking, that studio, you think, I'm here, I'm I'm here. Wow, it's that moment. Doesn't that make that you moment. so proud of yourself though? 100%, um, yeah. this is the thing. Never give up on your dreams of what you want to become. Yeah. If it's meant to be, it will never pass you by. And I've still got a dream to achieve yet, Selena Hun. I'm not quitting yet. I'm a 40 year old man. I'm getting fucking older and uglier. I've got wrinkles, like more wrinkles than a corduroy cap, right? And I have, but I ain't quitting yet. You know, I've still got one more thing to achieve. But then, before then, I can say, thank you, universe. I'm retiring now. <laughs> that, is, that is me done now. Thank you. But until that moment, I will keep going. Even if I get so pissed off and down those yeah. most days, thinking, oh, keep going. Yeah. Keep going. That's good advice. Well, what's the dream then? What What are you still aiming for? The dream, and I'll tell you this now, I've been being on another reality show. I want to get another reality show. I don't know. I'm, I know what one I want, but it's... Which one? That, I want the jungle. I want but the I'm jungle. Slip. Yeah, I want that big time, big time, right? I'll give my left arm for it. But it ain't going to happen. And I know this for a fact because I've done Big Brother and they're like, because I've done Big Brother, they don't follow it. But it was six years ago, Big Brother, right? I've changed a lot, got um, wiser, uglier, uh, leaner, sexier, whatever. But <laughs> I, I want to do a reality show and then my dream would be to present – Get this, strike it, Richie. Strike it, Rich, like Michael Barrymore done many years ago, right. and hope like a quiz show where I can get to know people on the show and and, and that. That would be the ultimate, ultimate like dream come true. Well, like What's an interview that? type of show, like your own yeah. night show, mm, like a game show. But yeah. I interview the guests before they go and do the game show, and then maybe I get to sing on it, like do a song. So, I can see you on Saturday night, Saturday Night Live. Why don't you go on that? Oh, my God. I would absolutely love it. My friend at the moment who was on X Factor, and she's doing so fucking well, Fleur East, smashing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, the she's my friend. Her? Yeah, she was on my year. So ah. um, I don't hear from her much, but I've got a number, and I know that she would message me back. If I was to message her right now, yeah. she would probably, within a few hours or a day, she would message me back. Because I know yeah. she's busy. So, um, but hey, you know, and Jake Quickerden was on my ear as well. Oh, yeah. so, you know, I had all the all the lovely people on my ear, darling. So, um, <laughs> so 
don't don't forget me, the fucking legend. They don't forget me. <laughs> That's the thing. I, I was a, I was a bit of a crazy one, but anyway. So um, she's doing so well, and I'm so proud of that, and I'm so envious as well. I'm like, I want that. <laughs> I know. You know what? It is what it is, hun. You know, I'm still keep going like you. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. It is so easy to like fall back or to think, especially in the beginning. Like, and especially because I guess you've had a bit of like of a taste of what it's like when you're in like the public eye. I started when I was 16. And then I didn't get my big break, X Factor, until I was 33. So get that, right? It took me all that time. And I'm still trying to achieve my dream now, which is to be, become um, a TV host, a personality, you know? I've done the fame thing, and I'm happy with that. Um, I've done the reality shows, but now there's one thing that's missing, and that is the host bit, the host yeah. bit. Like Ryan and done, you know? Um, are, are you in touch with Ryan? Do you speak to him? Sometimes on Instagram, we have a little kind of back and forth moment. Yeah. And I love him because he was we big brother. He was, he, you know, he was like one of the hosts. And uh, I think, you know, me, me and Ryan, he, he's just done so well. Fucking yeah. smashed it. And such a stunning, beautiful, talented man. So if he does watch this, fucking turn it up. Ryan, I love you. He's a great guy. He's just so oh, my amazing. God. If he watches this, I need to know about that. I need to know about I, it. I message him. I message him once the video's out or whatever. He's down to earth. He's not one of these like, oh, I'm fine with him. You can t- Do you know what? What's crazy is that even though we don't know what celebrities are like, you can tell who has like such a genuine soul. And the fact that you're still in touch with like Fleur East and, and Rylan and all these other people, that's how you know when people are genuine about what they're doing and that they really care yeah. about the, the other people that they're working with. Do you know what I mean? One hundred percent. Like not fake, not um, um fame gone to their head or yeah. anything. They're just so on that level where they're humble enough to talk to people, whoever, you yeah. know, and that's not nice. and you know what? I, I'm not one of these big, big names. I, I I've had my fame and I you know people still recognise my ugly mum, but um, <laughs> you know but I, I <laughs> Fucking right. <laughs> have you had any moments where you're like you've you've had have you ever had bad moments in the industry? Ooh, wow. I'll be honest with you, the amount of emails I've sent over the even the space of a few few weeks, months, yeah. only two people really have got back to me. Like the, I'm talking about agencies, uh, yeah. TV companies, um, jobs. Um, you know, you name it. I fucking I email because I'm not being funny. You can't just rely on your agent to get your work. No. You can't. It's a double um, kind of commitment. You do some work, they do some work. So I've been emailing jobs and 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 different companies and sending them a show off and shit like, as you do, you know. And I've not, you know, I probably had two replies back. Yeah, you know, yeah. and they were to say thank you very much, Stevie. We're not looking for anyone at the moment. Wish you all the best for your career. Bloody blah blah. blah. So I'm like, okay, thank you for that respect. Yeah. But it's, the fact that it's people that don't just have the common courtesy to just go. You just say no. Just say no. Yeah. Give me a yeah. reject letter or email to say thank you, but it's no from me. All the best. Kind regards. You know, something yeah. like, you know, so, so do you know, Han, I'm with you there because even I get it. I do. Don't I get rejected or I get no reply. And it's so in frustrating yeah. you, think, you know just give me that common courtesy so yeah i've never had any rude replies right. like from people saying your shit you know, other than social media <laughs> when people go oh you're a shit singer and this that and the other i get i've had it all trust me right i'm with people but never no one rude as in that they've gone oh no he's fucking oh i don't know you know nothing bad so but just remember one thing in the TV industry, hun, everyone knows every, everyone. Yeah. Every, it's so small and clicky. And it's true. And I'm giving you this advice right now. Just never always be nice to even the, the toilet cleaner, the runner, because you never know when that person, when you if you were horrible with that person, when they're up the top or, or being the, the big booker, fuck me, they're never going to book you. So my mm-hmm. advice is to you and to everybody, 
always be nice to the people even cleaning the toilets because you never know where that person will be i'm always polite to people never rude mm -hmm. i give them respect but if they give me shit back if they give me shit and respect disrespect me i'll be like hold on a minute you know <laughs> come on yeah, yeah I, another thing i notice as well when when you're kind of at the top or in the or wherever right people want to know you and this mm -hmm. is true as well i've noticed this uh, when you're there, you're like you're, you're the favourite. Uh, like you know, people that want to know you. That, that everyone comes out the shelf. But when you're fucking rock bottom or yeah. whatever, and you're like, you, 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 no one wants to know you. And I've learned over the years that people. Another. Oh, I'm, I'm so fucking full of sayings. People will only want you when you're at the top, or not, or the, the people will only want you um, to support you even when at the bottom. So. My advice as well, if you didn't want me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Yeah. And I yeah. love that. I love it. It, it. I swear by it now because I know that in a few years, well, hopefully in a year's time when I'm where I want to be, I'll be like, you didn't want to know me at my worst. You don't deserve me at my best. It, yeah. I won't be rude about it, but I'll say, well, where were you when I was fucking dumb? Yeah. You know, no one wanted to know me. You know, now you want to know me and jump on the bandwagon. You know, so I always say, always be nice to people, even fucking at the bottom or whatever. Never be an asshole to them. And you know, it's funny that it works both ways in terms of like, like you said, the top people, but also people that know you personally, but don't really support your work and like don't support what you're doing. And then as soon as you start to get popular and start to get things going, you start. There you go. Seeing people messaging you and popping up saying, Oh, congrats, like what are you doing? Let's catch up, yeah. like type of thing. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, uh, oh, I know. Yeah, it's my best friend. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>